Roman Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me for today is Silver Quill. Just for today? Oh, I see how it is. Review them, then leave them. Hey, I didn't mean it that way. No, no, I see. Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> now nah, we'll make a special holiday for you, man. And also joining... <laughs> and also Silver the... Day, I like it. <laughs> and also joining us today is Tatera. I'm just trying to think of a special holiday to name this occasion. Um, uh, I, I got nothing. <laughs> I shall name it the Silver Quit Appreciation Day. How about the Blurt Fest? Blurt Fest? Oh, you, yeah, why? You just blurt everything out. Yay! Why not, right? But anywho, getting back on track, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 17, The Summer Sunset Back. In this episode... Twilight is determined to make Celestia and Luna's last summer sun celebration memorable, but things start going horribly wrong. So, before we officially start, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, having just had an episode where we got to see Twilight going, you know, Twilight Nana's one last time, now it's beginning to close the book. Now it's it's saying... No, if she's put that behind her, she's more organized. She's not going to hit the panic button every five seconds. That's the real thrust of this episode. But it also has this delightful interaction with the uh, terrible tr- triad. The terrible triad? You mean the tr- treesome, tr- treesome, gruesome? I go with terrible triad because I like alliteration. Ah. I don't even think I'd be able to say what Norman just said because that sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> Is the what was it the gruesome tree some gruesome? That sounds kind of um... yes, <laughs> just like my Friday nights. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but anyway. stay tuned as we learn more about Norman than we ever wanted to. <laughs> uh, anywho, is that also the well? Yeah, just that it was very very enjoyable, but we'll get into the specifics sh- forthwith. Alrighty then, and Tara, what about you? I really like this episode. I like how Twilight's not exactly being her whole Twilighting or Twilight Nana's all. And like Silver said, this is basically the last time we discuss something about this. And yeah, I mean, that's all I got to say for first impressions until we get later on. Alright then, and as for me, I like this episode. This episode was fun, but it does have this thing where... They have this split storytelling mechanic that they're working in. And I don't know. I I like the episode overall, but I I guess I have more to say about it later on. But anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And we start off with, well, our protagonist. Uh, We have Grogar just walking around or... Brooding, yes, he's brooding and telling the other three that they're useless. They couldn't even get a stupid bell. And he walks out trying to find a plan, while the rest, Cozy Glow, Chrysalis, and T Rex, um, gloat about how they are smarter than Grogar and have the bell and need to find a way to work on it. Cozy Glow says that Twilight has a lot of books, and she mentioned that. There is a forbidden section in the Cantalot Library. Maybe we should go there and look for it. And so, the group goes to Cantalot. And with that, uh, intro music goes and we return back with Twilight. Organizing and stuff. Like, she's have a corkboard, she's writing stuff, and there's a knock on the door and Celestia Luna comes in. They want to make sure Twilight's not going Coco in the loco. And to their surprise, she's rather calm and maintained. She just says, oh, you guys are worried about me going crazy. (laughs) Uh, I have learned to take things down a notch and learn to delegate. And also, odd trivia night, I am well adjusted. Yay, continuity. Yay. You owe me a quarter. (laughs) Oh, but anywho, uh, Celestine Luna comes in to tell... Twilight that, yo, Twilight, we want to let you know that uh, after 
this there will won't be any more Saruma Sun celebration. I hope you're cool with that. And Twilight starts to panic a bit, but don't worry, she's brand new now. Yay. Anyway, I'm going to pause here. And Silver, what do you think? Well, all this is funnier in hindsight with the knowledge of who Grogar really is. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the villains basically saying, yeah, we're smarter than Grogar. Oh, you have no idea how accurate that is. <laughs> yeah. Although, uh, technically, though, you're smarter than Discord. Eh, true. I'll just wait until we get to that episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the what's shall echo across the valley. Also, we'll need a valley. But it is fun to see Celestia and Luna checking in on Twilight. Given that the last time we saw them, Twilight was struggling to raise the sun and the moon uh, with that strange dial, which apparently has been fixed and they get a little bit more practice. Yeah. And I like that they're taking elements from uh, Between Darkness and Dawn and, uh, oh, what was the name of the trivia one? We were just there. A Trivial uh, Pursuit. Yeah. Taking elements from that to show, yeah, Twilight's changing. She's growing. Soon she'll quite literally be growing. <laughs> you know, it's a fun, somewhat peaceful setup. When there's very little of the genuine tension just yet. All right, all right. And Tara, what about you? I also like how things start off, too. I like how Celestia and Luna, when they walk in, they're expecting, you know, a big mess and Twilight's flying around panicking. Well, no, she's just sitting down calmly, getting things ready. And even Spike's relaxing. Usually he's there to calm Twilight down. He's like, nope, no problems here. Just relaxing. And yes, it's true. She does freak out a little bit because of the last minute pl- plans, but it's nothing too big that she can't handle. And like Silva said earlier, she mentions about the um, Trivial Pursuit and Between Dark and Dawn. We saw that her freak out earlier there. And now we see that her growing, she's not freaking out as much. All right. All right. Uh, is that all, Tara? Yeah, that's all. All righty then. Anyway, I'm going to continue on. So we return with Twilight gathering all her friends and letting them know that, yo, this will be the last Summer Sun celebration and we got to make things special for Celestia and Luna because, well, uh, they've been around for so long that they're old. Let's just say that they're old and they have done so much for us and we need to show them our appreciation. So anyway, I have a plan and Rainbow Dash hopes that no more work. Please, no more work. Please, no more work. And unfortunately for her, it's more work. But the work that Twilight is giving them is not that hard. It's written on a post-it note for their assignment. Discord pops in, wants to help, and Discord's poof them away. While in the seedy back street of Cantalot, we see the gruesome threesome plotting and planning, but they're puzzled by the sudden surge of citizens in Cantalot. They're wondering why, what's up with today? But it doesn't matter because Chrysalis say that she might get in through flying. And Gurgle just points out the security system has been buffed. So yeah, Chrysalis says, I am a changeling. I can do stuff. Let me transform into a guard and go through the door. But it seems that the security measure have been up a notch that going through the front door won't work. So they start to bicker until Discord pops them into reality. And they discuss that Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash needs to head to the Pegasi for stuff. Rarity and Spike are going to see the unicorns for some fireworks and Applejack and Pinkie Pie have to look for Brayburn about food and something like that. And, well, Discord has to do... Well, don't do Discord stuff. Okay. And the ter- Terrible Tree overhears this and they spark off a plan to, well, try use this opportunity to their advantage. And I'm going to pause here. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how Discord does basically... I guess you could say kind of breaking the fourth wall because tw- when Twilight brings out the, I guess say the flashcards, it's it's not a long list. Like even how the rest of the main six or main five, uh, were ex- were kind of with Discord and being like, oh, we were kind of expecting a huge list. And when Twilight's like, oh, you know, I've changed. Discord's like, ah, oh, character growth. 
that was a funny bit. That was a funny bit. <laughs> and oh man, if I could say more about Discord, but we're not there yet. <laughs> All right. All right. But um, um I do like though how to when Chrysalis tries to break in and she's the guard, she's asking to, you know, help uh like she's asking, Hey, I'm a transfer, let me in and they don't let her in right away. It's like good. These they're kind of smart and you don't trust anyone that's trying to get in so easily without the proper star or whatever. Or, or, yeah, I guess there's a star to get in. But I mean, oh, I can't really say much about Discord because, you know, we're not at that point yet, but it's at this after seeing the final episode, you know, it's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know, all right, you know. And Silver, what about you? Well, one, I find it just so weird that all those security measures Shining Armor put together are actually relevant. <laughs> and they're working. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Why? But the the glaring flaw in his security system appears once again when chrysalis trots on up to the front door and tries to force her way in or order that everyone let her in the guards should have sensed security breach someone doesn't know our protocol this could be an imposter detain that should have been priority numero uno but they did not because no matter how good your security system, if you don't train your, your uh, well, I guess, pony resources in this case, it doesn't matter. I just think this whole, the season finale could have been prevented if the security guards were actually good at their job. Yeah, I, I think it's time for a change. You know, probably some griffins in the rank or something like that. I mean, it will be a good plan, right? Oh, I, I see. So you, you make the Griffins the security system, because that's all they're good for. I had no idea you were so speciesist, Norman. Hey, at least you didn't say hippogriffs. I'm just foreshadowing stuff. <laughs> but basically, Shining Armor and Flash Magnus deserve a pay cut for this. Why does Shining? Shining's not involved. He's the one who put together these security systems. Yeah, don't you remember? I don't think he's getting paid, that's the thing. Couch time. He's... Got to sleep on the couch for a while. Yeah, probably. Fella Silva? Well, I mean, for now, most mostly it's just uh, more character growth for Twilight's only giving little notepads rather than like five fifty bajillion scrolls. I find that very enjoyable. <laughs> Yay. All right. So I'm going to carry on. And okay, guys, I'm going to speed things up a bit because here is where the chaos is going to happen. So, we see that Pinkie Pie and Applejack are talking to Brayburn, discussing about the additional plans and whatnot. Brayburn says, no problem, we can do this, but please get Pinkie out of here because she's going to uh, make us go bankrupt or stuff because she's eating us our stock of supplies. And when they go away, we see that T-Rex is using his magic to suck the pony powers or the energy aura, whatever it is, from the ponies and render them weak. Oh no, with that, Braben says, don't, everybody don't touch the food, the food may be contaminated or poisoned. And T-Rex sells a pie. <laughs> Yay. On the other end, we see Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy talk to the coordinator about adding more flair to the show and whatnot, and he starts to panic. Interestingly enough, Fluttershy goes up to him and tells him to calm down. He calms down, and the other two go off. Cozy Glow appears and tells the stallion that, Yo, you you seem stressed. Let me help you with the small problems. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. And last but not least, Rarity and Spike goes up to the um, fire fire flare and crackle closet the unicorns that do firework magic yay they're really awesome so rarity goes up to them and shows the cue card to them and the pony says haha this we are beyond we we are just awesome you don't worry don't worry we we do this we do this with that rarity and spike Walks away, and Queen Chrysalis appears to be some uh, character called Crackle Closet, something like that. All right, it's the same disguise she used in the Mean Six. Ah, 
Was she an Earth Pony back then? Uh, I think I think she was a unicorn back then as well. Huh? Let me just do a look, little check on the old uh, wiki wiki. All righty then. I'll continue on for a bit. Wiki wiki wah wah. <laughs> Anywho, um, I'm just going to call her Chrysalis because it's Chrysalis. Chrysalis just says, okay, that's impressive, but aren't you unicorn superior than the other ponies? You could aim higher and be greater. Okay, bye-bye. That offends me so much. <laughs> well, it's working then. <laughs> Anywho, Fire Flare ponders about what Chrysalis said. And we, well, move on to the next scene where everything's uh, coming along together. Everything is going on well. Like, w- what could go wrong in that one minute of time? Surprisingly a lot. Because it seems that... Um, most of the ponies are barging in. Braben tells them that all the ponies are somehow weak and powerless. The unicorn guard comes in telling the group that, hey, there's something wrong with the weather. And a uh, fiery flare tells, we're not performing. This is beneath us. We have high aspirations to go to Broadway or something like that to see or make cats. Meow. Oh, no. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it! So, anywho, uh, they look out the window and see chaos. Chaos is happening. Applejack decides to tell uh, Twilight about what's going on, but the rest of the group says we shouldn't. We shouldn't make Twilight panic. Oh, no. And the group are kind of discussing and hope for a miracle. And guess what? Discord is coming along and says, Oh, it would be a shame if I were to go away and not help you guys. Poof, I'm not here. And Fluttershy says, You know what, guys? We can do this. We we, we got we, we really can do this. Let's do it. And, well, I, I'm going to pause here. So what do you guys think? Silver? We got this together. Well, first off, a report on my study of the wiki. Yes, Chrysalis took the form of a unicorn back in the mean six. All right, then. So she's got the old classics. I got to say, Brayburn's stupidity uh, continues to shine through. He's become a much less capable uh, stallion in my eyes. Because here's the thing. They made special note to show that he was one of T-Rex's victims back in Twilight's Kingdom. And he's not saying... Oh my gosh, this feels exactly like when that T-Rex done took all my magic. I mean, again, if ponies exercise just a little bit of common sense or awareness, they could have averted a whole lot. And that makes me sad. But I love that Fluttershy has found a kindred spirit uh, in this panicky manager, and she gets to play counselor, which gets which shows her growth. Sort of building off what she did with Zephyr Breeze. But now she can she can help out a total stranger. And Tempest Shadow 2.0. Oh, really? Well, this is what people sort of describe the fireworks lady. Because she has the same body style and and uh, as Tempest and works with fireworks. Oh, like Fizzle Pop Berry Twist. But isn't that the same mold as uh, Fleur de Lis? Which is the same mold as Luna and Cadence. So, you know. I was getting more of the Sassy Saddles vibe. Yeah, so I mean, the models is there. It's been used before. I I guess Tempest shares the same body shape then. But either way, I just find it funny. And she's so haughty. <laughs> I mean, it's like... I mean, it's like, wow, this is all it takes to undo y- y- centuries of, of camaraderie? Well, okay. <laughs> we never We never end our vices. We only rise above them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you can say that the unicorn master race is still there then, huh? 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 Always, 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 always. And now that now they're like, we can't tell Twilight Apple checks. Just like, give me a break. I keep doing this. I always tell, be honest, be kind. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, I guess, when she has her true meltdown. <laughs> but I feel for Applejack this episode. Yep. yep. Okay. What about Discord, man? Well, just that he's like, I'm not going to be your deus ex machina this time. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Bye. And then, like, okay, that's good on you, Discord. You're you're still a massive idiot for what's coming down the pipe. 
Oh, yep. Anywho, Terra, what were you? I'm gonna have to agree with Silver with the whole Brayburn thing because, yes, we see back then that Brayburn was charging right at T-Rex with a bunch of other Earth ponies and he gets the magic sucked out of him. And then in here, it's like, oh, don't eat the food. I feel so weak, yet I somehow I feel like I had this feeling before. I mean, you know, it's not really his fault, though. I guess you could say it's the writers. They try to make us think that he for we forgot, but no, we remember. Especially Silver, you know? <laughs> I remember. But <sighs> if that's the case, right, uh, the first victim, the Earth, the Green Earth Pony, she should have mentioned something like that, too. Uh, back then, every pony got their... Aura or energy sucked out of them. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and then we got the Fluttershy. I like how she's not that shy no more and she's helping other people. And basically, I guess, I mean, when she told him to take a big deep breath in and then out, Kai got a bit of like, um, a Cadence vibes when Cadence was giving Twilight the lesson of breathing in, breathing out. I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if she got that from Cadence on breathing in and breathing out and staying calm. Although it also makes me curious why this guy doesn't know who Cozy Glow is, unless it's just the school who knows. But, I mean, if someone tried to suck up all the magic in Equestria, I would at least try to know who did it and even see a picture of the pony who tried doing it. Well, I I've thought about this one, and in all honesty, I have a few theories. Uh, theory number one, that the news didn't spread that far because she's a minor and they didn't want to ruin her reputation, so just slam her into Tartarus. That's one. Uh, the other is... Listen, what? Banish the child! <laughs> Cast her into the pits of hell! Uh, the other is that... No, they didn't want to tell who was involved? I, I don't know. It sounds strange. People should know. Eh, but anywho... Well, another thing too... That when Chrysalis comes in saying, you know, unicorns are the master race. And I'm just, I'm all watching. I'm just like, oh, not this again. <laughs> Back when I first started with Created OC and how I'm an Earth Pony and everyone's like, oh, no, unicorns are the master race because we have magic. No, Pegasus are the master race because we can fly. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I'm part Pokemon. So I can just <laughs> use all these kinds of moves on you. How about that? <laughs> Totera, you splash. It's not very effective. Well, technically, I can't. They can't learn sm splash. See, it's not effective at all. <laughs> but I also like too how uh, when Discord comes in, like they're like, "Hey, we need a saving grace," and Discord comes in, and be like, "I suppose I could help." And then after he just disappears, saying, "Nope, you guys are on your own." And I actually like that because if they kept relying on Discord all the time, how would they manage to rule a question on their own? Because Discord can't always be there to help them, which is what I'm glad I like seeing. Because Discord's like, "Yeah, you know, I won't be always be here to help you guys out. So you guys got to learn to do things on your own." True that. True that. Or there's a theory where, okay, I help, I help. But he's playing the long game to real Equestria. Ha ha. Uh, you really push it, Norman. <laughs> I know, but... I'm truly trying to keep keep my <laughs> stuff, my words back. Soon, my friend, soon. Okay. Anywho, with that, we carry on to the next scene. We see that the ponies are trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, Pinkie Pie checks the ponies for... Uh, sorry, the ponies that were down for symptoms or whatever it is. And Applejack theorized that could it be the food? And Pinky panics because she ate the food. And no, it's not the food. Uh, the food was not the problem. So we see a lonely guard being... Well, let's just say this, he's not doing a good job of guarding the door. And the terrible tree... Barge in to go to the library and steal a book. Rainbow Dash and the Wonder Bolts try to uh, weather the storm, but it seems that it's beyond them for now. And wow, this is all over the place. Anywho, uh, we, we go back to the terrible tree, and as they go along trying to find the library, a lonely geese looks with suspiciousness and follows them. Uh, and Rarity goes back to the firework ponies asking them, why are you leaving? And, oh wow, this is all over the place. Uh, the goose alarm 
kind of talks to another goose and the goose says everything's clear and said goose was Christmas. Oh no. And it seems that uh, they found a library? Okay. And Celestia, Twilight and Luna walks around, you know, just admiring the night and suddenly Discord appears and he is just standing by for chaos and chaos happens because a lot of things is going on that makes Twilight question what the he is going on and with that Applejack has her meltdown and Twilight drags every one of her friends around asking for an explanation and it seems that they tell Twilight what's going on and Twilight doesn't panic that's good on her yay she has grown a lot and she delegates a plan to well kind of settle the situation even Celestia and Luna joins in the fray to deal with the problem and I am going to pause here because the next scene will be a montage so Silver what do you think all right, that guard needs to be fired because he looked right at T-Rex. He saw T-Rex right there. He was present while Crystal and the others stepped in, still conscious as far as I know. And he told no one. No one whatsoever. I cannot believe how much I'm harping on this, and yet it's really a thing. The guards in this are beyond inept. They are almost <laughs> double agents, unintentionally. I mean, I guess the only thing I could assume is that there's a maybe a memory wipe spell, but... The guards uh, are the true villains. That's all we gotta say. say <laughs> poor, poor human resources is the true villain. No, oh, <laughs> man. I think T-Rex used Kaioken. No, not Kaioken. Sort of Lair. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. I did love that T-Rex Shadow gave Cozy Glow horns and uh, bracketing her head. That was a great visual. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is true. That is true. And I do feel for Applejack. I mean, she she's told Twilight honesty when with this, with uh, when Celestia couldn't act, uh, and basically had to lean on Twilight to say to tell Pinky she's not good at with her uh, flugel. But no, what was the bagpipe like instrument? Luzuvela? The Yavidaphone. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yavidaphone. So she's always telling people. Well, okay, here's the problem. She's always telling others to do the right thing, to be honest. But I realize she never just goes and does it herself either. She is simultaneously trying to be the group's conscience, but not breaking away from the group, which I, I know is actually very hard to do. So I feel bad for her, but I also sort of real, but I also realize, well, she has some autonomy she's not exercising. Well, if she does go and tell Twilight behind her friends. Like, that's a betrayal of trust there, too. But, well, you're betraying a friend no matter what you do. So Applejack is in a no-win situation. Harumph. True, 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 true. Anything to add more, Silver? Well, just that it's good to see them all working together f under Twilight's direction. I do miss Twily Nanas, but I'm glad that, to know that she's not going to be like that for her entire rule. All right. And Tara, what about you? All right, so I'm going to go back to my previous statement about how Brayburn doesn't know T-Rex and that word didn't spread, or, you know, about Cozy Glow and stuff like that. So how come the guard, when he, see, when he sees Cozy Glow, doesn't say anything and just stares at her until the shadow comes up? I mean, you, I, I'm pretty, I mean, sure, we could just say, oh, he wasn't there to arrest Cozy Glow and stuff like that. But, I mean, come on, the word could have just been spread around the guards being like, hey, this this uh, little pony Cozy Glow, she's uh, in Tartarus now. No, just stays there and stares at her until a giant shadow comes along and then he gets knocked out. <laughs> There's no defending them. Like, I am usually the positive one out of the group, giving people or giving pony chances, like, you know, giving a leeway, hand waving here and there. No, I, I got nothing for this one because if the guards were competent, they could have reported that, yo, I was attacked by this big horn guy while a small pegasi was in the way or something like that. And 
it matches the description of T-Rex and Cozy Glow, and they could have checked Tartarus, but no. And you you know, how are they eating in Tartarus? Like, shouldn't uh, Luna be sending them food or whatever it is? I mean, <laughs> basic necessities and stuff? I'm just saying. I don't know. I just, this is just one thing that bothers me about the guards. Like, come on, do your job. Just one thing? I mean, seriously, I could name a whole list. <laughs> hey, wait. If the guard... Okay, he, he, here's what I noticed. Because remember in the season finale of season 8, didn't there was a group, large group of guards going marching to Twilight's school to, well, kind of deal with the problem? Wouldn't the guard be there too? No? Well, we don't know which guards went and which were still guarding Canterlot. But either way, yeah, we, we don't really know. Mm. I'm pretty sure it would have been the same guy. But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> either way, they're bad at their job. Yes. Yeah. Anywho, is that all, Terra? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I also do like, too, how... Um, I mean, got kind of winding here back, but when Twilight gave Discord the the, um, the card saying "Don't do anything Discordian" or something like that, yeah. and he and then Discord just comes along with Twilight, Celestia, and Luna, and then he's just like, "Oh, I'm not doing anything. Just can't wait for the chaos to happen." And all of a sudden, you know, he's just basically being an audience member, be like, "Oh, it's about to start," and then you see all of her friends panicking and wondering what's going on. And I actually like how instead of trying to instead of panicking. Or, you know, trying to ask someone else. Uh, she instead, of course, asked Applejack. She's the honest one. And like Silvis pointed out with how Applejack basically said, you know, honesty is the lesson here. So once twice asked Applejack, hey, what's going on? And Applejack just snaps. And you're like, I told you she had told the truth. And... I love how Twilight's like, you know what? That's it. She's at a snapping point where she gathers up all her friends. And I do like how... Discord's basically expecting, oh yeah, we're gonna see her freak out again. This is what the fans like to see, but she's like, oh no, I'm past that now. It's like, okay, it's a bit. I'm not saying it's a sad part, but it's f- nice to see her growing, and it's the last that we'll see of her freaking out. Well, until the finale. Mm. Where... Yes, <laughs> but then we don't get a Twilight freak out. We get a Twilight Meltdown. existential crisis. <laughs> Even worse. Uh, all right, then. With that, I'm going to carry on. So, like I mentioned before, there's going to be a montage of, well, uh, what's going to happen. So, uh, the group is split into doing certain chores. Applejack and Fluttershy are helping the sick ponies. Rainbow Dash is helping gather the clouds and busting them. Uh, so is Luna and Discord. Discord has a very fancy way of Clearing away clouds. Let's just say that he puts them beyond the fourth wall. Under the fourth wall, probably. And Twilight goes talk to the firework ponies and tell them that you're not beneath everyone. Cool your jets. You're subpar. If you're not in Vegas, you don't mean anything. And while this is happening, we see that Chrysalis and T-Rex and also Cozy Glow are trying to look for the book. Cozy Glow finds the book chained up. Oh no, uh, it's the most dangerous chain ever. Cozy Glow finds a book, I think it's called Key, and uses it to smack the chains away and it breaks. Aha, uh, I, I, I find it very entertaining. With that, the group goes away, not letting anybody know that they were there. And let's just say that everything is back to normal without a hitch. Yay. With that, the Summer Sun Celebration is on its way with Twilight using the dial to raise the sun and lowering the moon while the three princesses are just standing there for show. Yay. Twilight announced on the PA system that this will be the last Summer Sun Celebration and announced a new holiday. And it's called the Holiday of the Two Sisters. Yes. Yay. So with that, uh, Celestia and Luna got got. And they are shocked at how seamless Twilight Plans is. So yeah, much awesomeness. 
with that, the whole group congratulates Twilight on the event and how things are going smoothly. And Discord just says, oh, it seems that my little princess is working her magic and is going well. Hmm, I wonder how the future holds for her. Hmm. On in the next scene, we see Grogar saying that he has found the thing that he's looking for and tomorrow he will go get it. And you idiots here got no idea what you're doing. I am the awesome one. You are the idiots. I am going to go to bed. See you later. And the trio there says, Oh, we are uh, one step ahead of Grogar and we got the book. We need to, well, master the book and try to be awesome with it and use the book against or use the bell against Grogar. Aha! Now, let's practice. And with that, episode ends. With one correction, Norman, they do also talk about how easy it was to get the other points to turn over. Ah, yes. That, that, that is a big hindsight. Sorry. Critical plot point. Yes, yes. Foreshadowing. Yes. Sorry about that. And yeah, um, like Silver mentioned, Chris did mention that, yo, it was kind of easy to make the ponies turn on each other. I think we should use that to our advantage. Yes, yes, yes. That episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, first off, I like that you sound like Beast Wars Megatron. <laughs> we can use this to our advantage. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, let me rephrase the ending there. Um, With that, let's move on to final thoughts then. Yes. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. One, it's kind of scary how the geese are still the best uh, security measure, even though I thought they were the silliest. Uh-huh. Although, uh, I don't know if we talked about this when we talked about uh, Sparkle 7, that the geese are actually a tribute to Roman mythology or possible history. No, that's new. Let me see if I can look this up. Uh, to do watch exclusive... Geese have been used throughout history and in modern times in ancient Rome. Geese are credited by the historian Livy for giving the alarm when Giles invaded from the Battle of Alia. In other words, they were actually uh, one of the first alarm systems because they'd honk at an intruder. And so My Little Pony is actually honoring that history with a guard goose that actually follows uh, better than the actual guards. So think about that. You're on the job and you just got outstaged, upstaged by a goose. <laughs> You'd be rethinking your career something awful. Well, I, I, I did get the Untitled Goose game, and that goose is one bad mama jama. Here's the thing. My overall feeling on this is that this is truly an anticipation of the final episode. It doesn't hold up a lot on its own because they solve the problems relatively simply. You know, Twilight works works her magic, pun intended, and everyone's back on track. She handles it very easily. It's almost an anti-climax in how they handle the problem. And Celestia and Luna are looking on and just getting all emotional because they know that Twilight's ready. Their time is passing. It's time to welcome the new ruler. So all that works well. It's mostly just saying, okay, Twilight's ready. She's built up. Now, how are we going to test her further? And that's where the epilogue with the villains comes in. I do also feel a little sorry for uh, T-Rex. He's all grumpy because he didn't get to keep the energy he stole. (laughs) But again, you'd think that someone would say, oh, you know, given how fast my energy returned, it's just like that time that T-Rex drained me. What is wrong with you, ponies? Senzu (laughs) Bean. Why are you so stupid? Stop being stupid. Are you being species as silver? No, because when they're actually being stupid, it's not species to say their ponies are being stupid. <laughs> Is it all silver? You want more? <laughs> I can go on. I mean, you could go on about how stupid the guards are. Oh, yeah. We can have a Posca discussion about that alone. I can't believe any of this. Everyone here is suffering a critical lack. That's probably the uh, of awareness. That is probably my biggest critique of this whole episode. The lack of awareness by so much of the cast. <laughs> the fact that the villains are not even that clever in their snooping. 
and yet they get away because everyone else is being stupid. <laughs> well, I, I guess it can be helped. So, anywho... It can be helped <laughs> if you actually analyze the situation. But nobody does that. So they're not getting paid enough. Not getting paid enough. You're a guard. Get to work. You sick. <laughs> you sick. Not even reviewing Ladybug. <laughs> ah! I think I've been compared to a ski snacks as regard to this. <laughs> ski snacks. <laughs> oh, please. From the Dark Crystal. Uh, but anywho, and anywho, um, Tara, how about you? <clears throat> well. I mean, aside from all that, where someone does bring a good point, but ah! yeah. <laughs> aside from that, though, I really enjoyed this episode. And even though it, it's kind of the last we see of Twilight freaking out, where, you know, she doesn't panic a lot, where, you know, it's all about that character growth. We see that she's not panicking a lot and that her friends, I mean, uh, I guess if I'm to be a bit nitpicky about something, it's the fact that they don't really trust Twilight after saying that you know she's not she's done freaking out, but yet they're like, no, we can't let her down. We gotta not tell her. And then you know, once they do tell her, it's like I really have changed. Like you're kind of breaking the trust here. I mean, she trusts you, and you you don't even tell the truth until everything goes bad. But I guess you know that's the whole reason for her character growth. I guess. But I mean, like I said, aside from that little nitpicky stuff, I really enjoyed it through the beginning and end. All right. Anything more? I don't know if I'm going to be spoiling it, but I guess they're kind of setting up for the season finale. I mean, with Discord saying you got to be prepared for what's coming up, Princess and stuff like that, and how Chrysalis, Cozy Glow, and T-Rex mentioned about how it's easy to manipulate all the ponies. I mean, as you heard earlier, I got a bit offended when they said the unicorns are the master race, <laughs> and, and I'm like, you know, I'm part Pokemon. Come at me. <laughs> all right, then. Anyway, um, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun to watch, but I'll just state out my biggest issue here, or my personal gripe with it, is that they're using the split storytelling mechanic, where there's quote-unquote two stories going on at the same time, and it felt a bit unfocused. You know, honestly, I would have loved to have an episode dedicated to the three of them, trying to get into the Cantalot library, trying to uh, trick the ponies and just having a just doing the plan that they have. But what we got here is a split where we get to see them in the background while the ponies are doing whatever they're doing. And that, that's my gripe. I, I, I think I like what they did in the previous season. Uh, what was that season again, Silver? Uh, where we see the pets and the Kunima Crusaders with Spike and the sisters. What was the episode again? Wait, an episode with the pets and the Kunima Crusaders? Yeah, um, Spike is supposed to take care of the Oh, pets. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. D- just for sidekicks? Oh. Is that just for sidekicks? Oh. It was ju- okay, it was just for sidekicks and uh, games po- ponies play. Two episodes tackling the same chain of events. I find that episode fascinating. I find, well, I find Just for Psychics frustrating. So horrible. Yeah. But I, I do enjoy the, what you call this, storytelling mechanic where uh, we get to see different point of view. So that's what I kind of enjoy. But I, I guess they didn't kind of like it. Hasbro or the writers. Huh, too bad. Or they didn't feel that it was warranted in this instance. Probably. But uh, on to the good points. Uh, I do like how the villain's plan is executed. I do like how Twilight has grown as a character. Felicia has grown as a character. And parts of the episode is really fun. From frustrated Applejack to Rarity uh, defending herself about making freely dresses and whatnot. And not even really dresses are in season and stuff like, yeah, uh, certain com- um, certain beats in comedy hits like that. Like th- those, those are fun. Overall, this episode was fun. Uh, personal gripes aside, this episode was a lot of fun. So, anywho, uh, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, you may have noticed that it's twenty twenty. Oh yeah. So let's practice a little hindsight and look back at some movies. Yeah. 
So next week we are going to do the movies that we watched of 2019. I think it's a tradition for us to do so because, well, we've been doing it for a while now, right, Silva? Yep, every year. Yep, yep. So let's continue on the tradition with this one. There's a lot of movies to talk about. And I I think this year we're going to, you know, go with a different flow of events. Make it more streamlined and stuff. But anywho, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at TheMutualGmail.com. You can also follow us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me in many places. You can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name. You can support my videos through either Patreon or Ko-fi. And you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I Shall Appear. And you can catch me on Wednesdays on Equestria Daily with editorials and reviews. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. Or they can just simply type it on Google and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, my stuff lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You have been great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Torterra. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Get better cards. You're fired. Who, me? No, not you, Norman. The guards. The guards that don't know how to do their job because they're so stupid. <laughs> Why does it remind me of you, HF? Uh, remember the neighbor with the karate dojo, Silver? Actually, I need a refresher on that. Oh, man. I don't remember that. Uh, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Uh, you, where else movie, UHF? There's a part where he's... Uh, there's a game show that he's hosting called Wheel of Fish. And... Oh, well, that I remember. Yeah. Uh, one of the contestants could either win a car or what's inside the box. She picks a box. The box is nothing. And the karate instructor says, It's nothing! You're stupid! So stupid! <laughs> Uh, we need to review that someday. That would be fun.